everybody welcome back to day 13 of our 30 day ekg challenge and as you can probably tell no video today maybe no videos for a few videos um my camera is not working so here we are but we've got a really interesting topic today we're going to dive into atrial fibrillation as we go through our 30 days of ekgs so uh, buckle up this is going to be a great one so let's talk a little bit about atrial fibrillation and what happens and then we'll talk about how that correlates to the ekg so we know that normally we get a nice what well, work can I use to describe this coordinated effort when the atria depolarizes usually the sinus node that sits here in blue fires off and it sends a nice coordinated wave of depolarization through the atria generating my p wave the av node then comes in contact with that signal we know the av node delays it by 120 to 200 milliseconds and then sends it down our his Purkinje fibers to create our qrs complex and so when we get this QRS and P wave coupling, that creates our normal sinus rhythm. And so in AFib, let's talk a little bit about what happens. So in atrial fibrillation, we actually get a disjointed or an uncoordinated effort within the atria. And so what happens is in the atria, if I zoom in a little closer, we end up getting these fibrillatory waves that get caught in these reentry pathways within the atria and we end up getting signals that go all over the atria. How does that happen? Well, oftentimes, when the left atria, most often, we'll say the left atria is here, sometimes chronic strain on the left atria causes chronic remodeling. And so sometimes you can get scar tissue laid down within the atria. And so instead of having nice signal that passes through the atria in one fell swoop, signals can get caught in re in, in these reentry pathways within the atria that are really small and develop into fibrillatory waves where the signals kind of sporadically spread through the atria. Now this disjointed effort allows for, um, or doesn't allow for good atrial squeeze, good atrial contraction, which is why we call it atrial fibrillation, the atria are fibrillating. And so we get signal just sporadically going through the atria. And so as you can imagine, we don't get P waves. We get no P waves. What we end up getting is these atrial fibrillatory waves. So the atria is kind of just quivering, right? So we get these fibrillatory pattern within the atria. And that fibrillatory pattern is going to be low amplitude because remember our atria is a small muscle. Let's talk about now how the rest of the heart depolarizes. So when you get these fibrillatory waves, the AV node is being constantly bombarded with signal, right? So here's my fibrillatory waves. The AV node is getting bombarded with signal kind of all over the place, all over the, all times. And the AV node is gonna have to capture that signal and send it down. Fortunately, the AV node is protective, right? The AV node does not conduct every single fibrillatory wave. Every single time a fibrillatory wave comes in contact with the AV node, thankfully it doesn't send those signals down to the ventricles because if it did, we would have a very rapid rhythm and rate. What ends up happening is that the QRS complex, which we know is generated when this AV node captures the signal and sends, sends it down, those QRS complexes are generated when the AV node recovers from the previous beat. And the AV node is gonna recover from the previous beat in an unpredictable pattern. And so what ends up happening is you get somewhat random conduction. Right? Remember in our sinus rhythms, the conduction from the AV node down to the ventricles is very coordinated, right? We get this nice sinus beat, fires off, and then it sends signal down. And so we know the next thing that's gonna happen is that signal's gonna go down to the ventricles. And it's gonna happen very coordinated effort. And then the cycle's gonna reset. But in AFib, what ends up happening is the AV node is just constantly getting bombarded with these fibrillatory waves and it can't always send them down, but it can every so often. And so we end up getting random conduction to the ventricles, and that creates a rhythm, a QRS complex, that is very irregular. It is so irregular to the point that we actually call it irregularly, irregularly irregular, meaning that there's no pattern. The AV node is going to conduct the QRS complex. And notice now, that once the AV node does capture that signal and sends it down, 
we should have normal QRS morphology. The QRS morphology itself should be unchanged, right? So we need to, in AFib, we need to, one, identify that as AFib. We also need to assess ventricular depolarization independently. So when I look at this rhythm, and I do the first thing I do, I just get an idea of what's going on. When I scan through the rhythm, I notice that I've got kind of sporadically, you know, here's a few beats, and then a pause, and then a few faster beats, and then a pause, and then it kind of faster, and then it's just kind of the same, and then a little bit longer, and then a little faster. So I look for a pattern. I don't really see a pattern, but I do notice that the QRS complex is, if I look at the duration of my QRS, this is a narrow QRS complex. So I know that my QRSs are being generated from my AV node. Remember that the AV node, when the AV node sends signal down to the ventricles, it does so via this Hisperkinji fibers that sends rapid signal through the QRS through the ventricles. And so a narrow QRS means that the rhythm is being generated at least at the level of the AV node or higher. And so when I see the irregular rhythm, I look for any identifiable atrial activity before each QRS complex. And when I look, maybe I'll start here in this rhythm strip and I uh, see some atrial activity, but I don't see any in front of there. Uh, nothing that like really matches, right? Look, there's nothing here. And when I look up at some of the other leads, I notice there's this baseline kind of fibrillatory pattern, right? Where the atria is just kind of producing signal. And you continue to scan through, and I notice that there is no really measurable coordination of the atria. So we would see a P wave. And so in the setting of a rhythm that is irregular, there's no regularity to how irregular it is, meaning that I can't identify a pattern like an AV block. Then this tells me, narrow QRS, irregular, irregular rhythm, this is atrial fibrillation. So the interesting thing about AFib is that we now have to figure out the rate of the AFib. And so we want to, now if I want to measure the rate, how do I measure the rate? Well, if I measure the rate between this QRS and this QRS, well, that R to R interval is going to be different than if I measure it from this QRS to this QRS. Right? So you're, now you're saying, well, how do I measure the rate of this? Well, if I know that my EKG strip here if I know that this EKG strip is 10 seconds, this is 10 seconds long. If I count the number of QRS complexes, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. If I know that 15 QRS complexes occur in a 10 second period, well, in a 60 second period, or beats per minute, we will multiply that by 6. And so 6 times 15. Uh, I gotta do math on a camera. I think that this is six times five is 30, 60, 90 beats per minute. If I'm wrong, you guys probably get the gist, but six, six times 15, 90 beats per minute. And what does this represent? Why did I calculate the rate for you guys? Well, my rate in AFib, my rate tells me my AV node. This is my AV node function in AFib, right? It's because in AFib, what happens if I come back up here and erase everything, remember that my rate is not determined by the atria. The atria are just quivering. They're sending signal kind of all over the place. And my, these, all these fibrillatory waves are bombarding the AV node. And so think, a QRS complex a QRS complex can only be generated when the AV node finally says that the QRS complex can pass through, that the signal can pass through from the atria down into the ventricles. So the rate that we calculate in AFib tells me my AV node's ability to conduct those signals. So we calculate the rate and we say that's what the AV node is doing. So, if you could imagine, if someone has AFib, and say this person's got AFib at a rate of 90 beats per minute. Well, how would I, if I wanted to clinically slow them down, say I wanted to take them from 90 to 60 beats per minute. If I wanted to keep them in AFib, I just wanted to slow them down. Well, I would give them a medication that preferentially 
does what? Slows down the AV node, right? So what medications will do that? Could be a beta blocker or a calcium channel blocker, right? What I'm getting at is that we need to preferentially choose to slow the AV node down in order to take this rate from a high rate to a low rate. So you can do this if it's AFib with a tachycardia type of response, you can slow the AV node down. So that's kind of the pathogenesis of AFib. Remember, we've got chronic, usually in older patients, we get some kind of chronic scarring or damage most of the time within the left atria due to hypertension. So you get left ventricular hypertrophy, left atrial strain. And then over time, what ends up happening is instead of having this nice coordinated sinus node firing off and creating nice P waves, what ends up happening is you end up getting these re-entry fibrillatory waves within the atria that bombard the AV node and my QRS complexes are determined by my AV node's ability to conduct. Because remember, every time that this AV node conducts signal down into the ventricles, every time it does that, it becomes refractory, right? As the AV node itself has to repolarize. And so that and the amount of time that it's refractory is how long it takes to go from beat to beat. So I hope that helps. Hope you understand a little bit more about AFib now. And um, tomorrow we're going to do another variation of AFib. And we're going to talk a little bit about how we can further um, really see different uh, differentiating features within AFib itself. Remember, we still need to evaluate my QRS in the setting of AFib because AFib, really, this rhythm is due to atrial pathology and AV node conduction of that atrial pathology. We would say the AV node here is a bystander, right? And so if we wanted to continue down our algorithm, we would see we have narrow QRSs that are upright and one in AVF, and they have nice good R wave progression. So this patient just has run-of-the-mill AFib. So I hope that helps. Um, if you have any questions, throw them down into the comments. And if not, we will see you on tomorrow's EKG video. We're going to dive a little deeper in AFib. So have a good rest of your day.